Hello, and welcome to the Shea Hates Everything podcast, where we talk about video games, movies, comics, and other shit that matters. My name is Shay, and today I hate that Sundays are now chore days. And my name is Kyle, and today I hate my left foot. The movie starring Daniel Day-Lewis? <laughs> also that. It's a good movie, though. <laughs> I don't believe you. I've never seen it. I think so you I won an Academy Award it. for that movie. I guess I can't say I hate it, but <laughs> I've never seen it. It doesn't sound great. <laughs> Mainly because my left foot is hot garbage right now because yeah. of the honeymoon. I was going to say, is it just leftover pain yeah. and anguish? And I have to mow my lawn, my in-law's lawn, and our mother's lawn because mm. uh, everyone's out of town right now. Mm-hmm. Except for me, so I'm. Do you want to drive down of... and and mow mine? I'm not gonna. It won't take you long. We have a small front yard, but that's one of the chores I have to do today. Yeah, I mm, doing that on a bum foot. Not a right. good time. Yes, certainly. Doing it, you know, I have to borrow my father-in-law's lawnmower because I don't own a lawnmower because I keep procrastinating buying a lawnmower because okay. I don't want to spend three hundred dollars on something like that. But his is, I'm very thankful to borrow it, obviously, but his is very old and is not self-propelled, which is ah. not super fun to use. So it is a true push mower. Indeed. Might as well just be the spinning blade thing that they used to use in, like, the 30s. <laughs> that you see all the Amish people using when you drive yes, by, exactly. and then, like, you kind of feel a little bad, but... <laughs> It's their they choice. chose that. They chose that life. <laughs> Respect right. for commit the commitment. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not committed to much of anything to that degree. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, what do you say we just dive into some stuff? I'm okay feel, with that. I feel like we're. This is a bit of a weird week because you know, or episode, because two episodes ago it was all the E3 stuff, and then last episode it was our big catch-up episode where it was like a month's worth of other news, stuff we've been playing and watching, and now we're just kind of like back to regular stuff. And like, with the news, there just isn't that much happening, because it's obviously post E3 and pre-San Diego Comic-Con, which we'll get a bunch of like, big movie stuff to talk about in the next episode. But this one feels like a Meh. And maybe I should maybe I shouldn't say that in the beginning of the podcast. (laughs) Like everyone has has already turned it off now. I don't know. It just feels like a weird episode. Yeah. Also, are you are you a little sick? uh, I'm a little hungover. Oh, okay. All right. (laughs) That explains it. We Kelly and I had a good time last night. She went through almost a bottle and a half of wine, which I have a lot of respect for hell yeah because that's a lot of wine it and is. i had uh three red bull vodkas like yeah. mason jar sized red bull vodkas and uh a screwdriver so we awesome. both went pretty hard and it was a really good time i normally don't do that the night before the podcast but for this specific reason, I sound like I am dying. Yeah. Um, and I've, I'm just like vaguely nauseous, which is like the worst kind of nauseous to be. Uh, but Saturdays, my wife is back to work now. And so she works a lot of Saturdays, which means I am solo with my daughter for the entire day, uh, which I love doing. But I'm not going to get drunk on Friday night and then have to be a single parent all day Saturday because that right. sounds way worse than muscling through a two-hour podcast being a little bit hungover. So, listeners, I decided to punish you instead of my daughter. I feel like that's probably fair. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good news sure. is when it comes to stuff we've been doing, I know I at least have some new video games. Well, uh, real quick, I, re- yeah. real super ultra fast. Hit me. Um, I would like to change my Today I Hate. Oh, boy. Uh, to be the gnat that is currently flying around my fucking computer desk. Because <laughs> it's going to be here for the next three hours yep. while we record this and there's nothing I can do about it. True. Yes. All right. Anyways, <laughs> what have you been playing? Um. Yeah. So I randomly decided to buy New Super Mario Brothers U Deluxe because I know Super Mario Maker Two just came out, and I know you have been playing it. 
Uh, but because I don't want to pay for Nintendo Switch online right now, because I won't use it regularly, and just like thinking about the time commitment of making levels, etc., I was not super into buying Super Mario Maker 2. But I wanted a an easy game to play that I can play in like 10 minute chunks. And New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe was on sale on Amazon for like, I think it was like $35.00. Which isn't like crazy cheap, but it, it came out this year. And so I was like, you know what? Yes, I will do that. Because I was online shopping for like bullshit. I bought a new belt and some no-show socks. Like nothing fun. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> I want to buy something fun too. Yeah. Uh, so I've been playing that. It's weird because I am not plugged into the 2D, 3D Mario space. Because I don't have a 3DS. I didn't have a Wii U. And so I haven't played the most recent, like, four 2D Mario games. Super Mario Land, New Super Mario Brothers, U, or, like, all that shit. I just hadn't played any of them. And so this is, like, there's so much going on in this game that I don't, that I haven't experienced before, all the different kinds of suits. Um, I think Cat Mario is in this one, but I don't, I have not gotten it yet, if it is. Okay. Uh, But this is, obviously, this is the Wii U 2d mario game that they have ported to the switch um but yeah it's really great for playing one level at a time because it's mario so it's not like i have to learn a bunch of new mechanics or like you know it's i've been playing mario for 30 years no 25 years i was not playing mario at one but uh yeah it's just a really good game for playing little short levels i'm through the first world so in the past two weeks i have played eight levels so that should give you an indication of the time commitment I'm sinking into this game, which right. is not much. But um, yeah, it's been fun so far. I do kind of miss the simplicity of something like Super Mario Bros. 3 or Super Mario World, where there wasn't all the additional layers, like different different enemy types and all the red coins that you get. And like, there's a ton of hidden um, sewer pipe levels in every level, like just that little bit more straightforward Mario. I do wish that there was more of that in this game. Um, cause they keep throwing new things at it, but that at least makes it feel new, which might okay. sound obvious cause it is new, but yeah, I've been having a good time with that. I know you aren't as big on the modern 2d Mario games. No, I really hate the new stuff. Is that just because of, like, the visual style or that it well, has okay. a bunch of extra so, stuff in it? I don't like the visual style because it uh, just kind of, like, obfuscates the, like, I don't, purity is the wrong, like, really shitty word to use. But, um, like, the, the purity of hard execution-based platforming. Yeah. That, like, classic Mario has. Um and so I just don't like the new stuff. We get, like, there's also like all these different movement systems, and like right. the physics work differently. Like it moves different, um, and like I I just really hate, really, really hate playing it. Um, Super Mario World is the uh, perfect Mario game. One hundred percent agree. And I don't ever want to play any other type of Mario game than Super Mario World. Um. It is the perfect 2D Mario game. I think that there is a ton of value in the 3D Marios, Super Mario Galaxy, Super Mario 64, even Odyssey. I love all of those games. So I wouldn't say that like I only want to play a 2D Mario, uh, but Super Mario World is the greatest of those games, I would yeah. agree. One thing that is annoying um, is the time limiter. Because there are all these new systems and secrets and stuff that the old games didn't have, the timer just feels like an arbitrary way of stopping you from enjoying that stuff. Like, I regularly find myself getting down to, like, 30 seconds by the time I complete a level, which was never true in the old school Mario games. Like, the timer was meaningless in the old school games because you... Like it gave you like four, yeah, it gave you like four hundred seconds. You were never gonna not finish a level in the time limit. And now I find myself like having to rush through the end sometimes because I want to take my time. I want to check all the different pipes. I want to do a bunch of different stuff. And so that feels like it. It's kind of at odds with this new thing that they're trying to do of adding a lot more secrets in each level. So that's a little bit annoying. Yeah. I also played the second episode of Life is Strange two. 
I believe that I believe episode four. I should actually have that here. Episode four comes out in August. Episode three came out, I think, in May, maybe. And after playing episode one last year, and hearing that oh, there are three months in between episodes moving forward, that kind of like killed a lot of my momentum of wanting to play them as they came out. But yeah, I think that's true of most people. I had a day where. Penny was not here and Kelly was not here, so I had like solo Shay time. Oh, I, it was a day I worked from home, and then after that, they were going to be late coming home, and so I was already home. I didn't have to drive, whatever. And I was like, you know what? Here, I have like two hours. Let me just sit down and play this. Um, it. My biggest complaint about the first game was that the initial story is not as clear and direction filled as season one, where it's very yeah. clearly like. Your task is to solve this murder with Max and with Chloe. And in this right. game, it's like you're running. Did you play? Have you played the first episode? No, I'm waiting okay. to the whole thing's out. Okay, because the whole setup is like a ba- I, I won't spoil stuff then. But the whole setup is like a bad thing happens, and these two brothers are on the run. You you play the older brother, and eventually you find out that the younger brother has superpowers. Not similar to Max necessarily, but they're superpowers, and that's kind of it. They're just like running away and there's not a huge end goal for them and so the first episode felt a little bit meandering and like little vignette stories that happen and this still feels a little bit like that like you get to a place and they stay at that place and then at the end they find a reason to make you have to leave that place but the actual like through line of the main story i'm not getting a ton from yet That said, the relationship between the brothers is still really, really strong. That's, like, the biggest thing that's getting me through. Um, It ties into the Awesome Adventures of Captain Spirit, which was the little demo one-shot that they did. And in that, um, you, I mean, you go into it, and it's, like, a little kid who's with a single dad who is, like, he's not, like, necessarily abusive, but, like, he isn't a great dad. He's an alcoholic, the wife died, and so he's, like, clearly depressed, and he's kind of taking a lot of that out on his kid. And that's kind of the struggle of that relationship. But the little kid, he has got a huge imagination. He wants to be a superhero. And at the end, like, he's climbing up into his treehouse and falls. And right before he hits the ground, he, like, floats. And that's how the episode ends of, like, oh, shit, this kid has superpowers. And so in this second episode of Life is Strange Season 2... You when you, like you are there at the same time as that kid, and so there's like a cross. That's their crossover between the two things. Is you witness that moment, and I won't go into the details of like what that means, um, just because you know it's a it's a pretty big spoiler. But it was a really cool moment to experience that from a third like from the outside perspective. Yeah, and then they do really cool things with that um, to end the episode. And there was a moment the way the ep- episode ends was one of those like holy shit moments like i visibly covered my mouth with my hand in shock at what had just happened so it it's pretty clear to me that like i'm still super invested in the story it's yeah. just the or i should say super invested in what's happening with the characters but the overarching narrative there isn't a ton of that. So like I'm like after finishing episode two, I'm not really driven to go immediately play episode three. Uh, So I'll probably take my time. Like I said, episode four comes out in August and then episode five is slated to come out in the beginning of December. We'll see if they can even stick to that date. I hope they do. But uh, obviously I have plenty of time to, to catch up on those last three episodes, but yeah. um, Yeah. it, It, I don't know. It's, I'm liking it a lot, but I can't help but feel kind of disappointed when compared to the first season because it was so incredible. Although, the Before the Storm one that I played was so bad that at least this is a significant step Not forward. That bad. <laughs> now that Now that Don't Not is playing or uh, is doing this again and not this other third party company, right. uh, at least the writing is much, much better than Before the Storm, which was hot garbage most of the time. And then uh, we played some Borderlands 2. Yeah, like uh, 25, 30 minutes. Yeah, we were going to play the Captain Lilith DLC, and then you realized that you had not downloaded it. You thought you had, but you hadn't, and so that was going to take a couple hours, and the whole point was we only had like 40 minutes to try to play something. So we just kind of started a new game. I'm playing 
uh, Siren. I'm playing Maya. And you're doing the psycho uh, the melee psycho, guy. Oh, yep. We'll probably occasionally play that. I don't know. But I it's like know. like we did with Borderlands 1. We did, we played in two different sessions in Borderlands 1, right? We started yeah. a game and then we came back to it a couple days later. And we probably played two to three hours total of that game. Yeah, that sounds right. Although I will say Borderlands 2 is just a better game overall. So it I'd be much more better. likely to go back and play more of Borderlands 2 than the first one. Yeah. But eventually we'll play that DLC because I really want to. And we yeah, can we just do. make the, the pre-rolled level 30 characters to do that. Right. I did want to play a Mechromancer because they put out that DLC of the Mechromancer and the Psycho new characters after I had like totally played through the uh, Borderlands 2 multiple times. And so I'm like, I'm not going to play another new game of this, yeah. but I'd like to see that character just because it's interesting. Sure. What about you? Well, uh, kind of buried the lead. I've been playing Mario Maker 2. Sure. Um, I have made a level, mm-hmm. Slippery Slopes Cavern. Uh, what what would a good Mario level be without an alliteration in the title? Um, <laughs> there, all right, so far, I made it about a week ago. So far, there have been 365 attempts and only eight clears. So it has a 2.19% clear rate. Nice. It's none of that, like, bullshitty, like, P-switch, hidden key right. crap. It's just... Good jumps, like timing your stuff, managing enemies, swinging on, swinging on crane claws, uh, and yes, this is Super Mario World level, mm-hmm. um, and it's a lot of fun. So I'm gonna plug my maker ID. It is T S zero N zero R X D F. It's my maker ID. So you can you can download Slippery Slopes Cavern, play it for yourself. It is that, like. All of your levels can be found at that ID, or are they? Yes, sig- yeah, that's the only one I've made level. so far. But if okay. they go to my maker ID, they can like follow me, and then they right. like under their whatever sub menu, all the levels I've created will be there. Are there also level IDs? Like, yes. can you share a spe- For okay. specific levels? Yeah. What like it's Nintendo? Nintendo. They don't know Guys. what the fuck they're doing. Like this was a huge complaint of the first game. Why yep. would you not fix that? It's yep. just, they're just so backwards when it comes to online stuff they are um and i don't think that will ever change yeah um have you played the like because i know there's a story mode as well have you you done any of that stuff so i was really frustrated um my my wife had started playing it and i sat down and i watched her play and she does not play mario games and she was very bad and she didn't even Mm -hmm. know you could run so she was having a lot of hard Hard times beating levels because she didn't know, like, the controls. So I got frustrated watching her play, so I played instead. Mm. <laughs> and I, like, I beat almost all the levels in the story mode. And then, like, halfway through, I realized I was on her profile and not mine. Oh, no. Um, so I have been going back through on my profile trying to beat everything. Because, like, you you unlock the ability to make certain types of levels through playing them right. uh, in the story mode. Um So I wanted to go ahead and beat all of the levels. Uh, And some of those levels are real pieces of shit that I don't want to play again. Mm -hmm. But I got to play them again. Um, So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Just, like, I'll pull up a video and uh, just sit at my computer and try and and not think about it too hard and just kind of (laughs) make my way through them again. It's not great. And I watched the Giant Bomb Quick Look. And I know there are also levels where, like, there are specific clear conditions. Yes. Is that all of the levels, or is that, a, like, a separate mode? Um, it's kind of, like, interspersed in mm-hmm. the story mode stuff. Um, like, there there are certain levels where you can't touch the ground after leaving it. Right. Um, and those are those just, like, have... It's more about, like, the level having interesting ways of dealing with that and giving sure. you solutions. Um than really necessarily like an execution on your part. Um, and then there are other ones like you have to defeat a certain number of enemies or you have to finish with a certain number of coins, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is nice. It's nice to have the option and kind of switches the gameplay up quite right. a bit. Well, um, and it just shows you like everything you can do in creating the levels. It yeah. feels like it's a, it, it sounds it's like at least that it's a pretty good tutorial. Yeah, it's yeah. like the Battlefield 1 campaign. Right, right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Mario Maker 2 is the Battlefield 1 campaign. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so I'm having an okay time with that. I've played a few of my friends' levels, but they're making, like, huge asshole levels. Sure. Where it's like, oh, you have, you have to, like, grab a shell, and then you kick it across some spikes, and then it bounces off a spring, and you have to time your jump, and it's like a long jump. You have to, like, kick the shell out and then jump after it so it hits the spring that's off screen that you don't know is there until mm -hmm. you've died already and then can come back. And then you have to, like, jump off the shell and, like, through a maze of spikes, jumping off shells or, like, hitting the on-off switches to not die, stuff like that. Like, those are asshole levels. I don't like playing those. Yeah, uh, I'm not looking for that stuff at all. I and made, those seem to be the most popular. Yeah, like, I made a really hard level in the first Mario Maker, and I was like, I don't want to do that again. I just want to make a level that, like, you can feel good about beating, not because it's over, but because, like, you executed on some, like, good old-fashioned platforming. Um, yeah. So that's kind of what I tried to make with mine. And that's probably the only kind of levels that I will make, just because right. I think... Uh, the um, the course world needs more of those kinds of levels and less <laughs> auto run, P switch as a platform bullshit. The auto run stuff I do think is cool though, but yes, you don't want. There's there's value in like... that like once. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of kind of it. There are Have other you... like I like. Uh, so the only reason I will play 3D World is if it's a Koopa Car level. Because the Koopa car is actually kind of cool. Okay. And, like, those are just, like, hey, it's driving, and you have to jump at the right time. And, like, there's all sorts of stuff that the car can do that, like, you can't. Um, and so those are, like, a fun change of pace kind of a level. So you have been playing other people's levels as well? Yeah. Just your I will usually... I don't go to, like, what's popular. I do, like, new courses, because those mm -hmm. are always ones that have just been posted where, like... Because I don't want to just play, like, the same levels that everyone's playing. I want to, like, see the new stuff that people are making and, mm -hmm. like, give them a few plays. So I've been playing, like, the stuff that's in new courses, which will range from hot garbage to semi-okay. Sure. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. I don't know. Play my level. It's really good. And I'm not biased. <laughs> When I eventually buy Super Mario Maker 2 in a year, I will play your levels. <laughs> yeah. uh, I will say it was a bitch to upload because <laughs> there is a checkpoint. So I had to beat it from start to oh. finish without the checkpoint and then go to the back to the checkpoint and beat it from the checkpoint to the end. Uh, that sucked. But mm. uh, I, I did, uh, through the course of trying to upload it, add a couple of mushroom blocks. <laughs> Just say sure. give yourself an out. So, the course is easier than it was originally designed. <laughs> um, I was just too frustrated. Uh, but apart from Mario Maker 2, um, I got Mighty Quest for Epic Loot on iPad. That game sucks. I played it for about a half hour. I'm going to uninstall it. I remember that game. I think I played it on PS3? Uh, okay. Yeah, it was on consoles and PC. I played it on PC initially. It was cool because like you could design your own dungeon and like people would try to run through it and get your stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and it was all about like playing other people's dungeons so that you could get stuff to make your dungeon harder. Um, this is not that at all. Hmm. This is just you're running through random dungeons. There's no create your own dungeon aspect. It's basically just like a Diablo style dungeon runner that's okay. uh, simplified to the point of boredom. Um, sure. And has all the on has all the yeah has all the free to play trappings. Ugh. Um, yep. So won't be playing any more of that. And lastly, I fell into a deep, dark, the darkest and deepest hole that has ever been discovered in this universe. And that hole is titled Farm Together. Okay. Um, it's currently running right now in the background on my computer because I need to harvest some flowers. <laughs> Uh, so I can finish a quest. And these flowers take 24 hours to grow. Why do I know the name Farm Together? Is this a new game? It, no, it's been around for a little while. Um, I'm going to harvest these flowers while I talk about it. So, uh, <laughs> um, I, I'm harvesting lavender, which makes the best soap, by the way. Not in the game, but in real life. <laughs> uh, sure. Anyway, like, it's... 
it's like Farmville, where yes. all the crops are on timers that you can see, and you have quests and challenges that you're trying to fulfill. Um, but it has like really nice art in a surprising way, hmm. um, and like is animated very well, and it's like a nice cartoony aesthetic. And I don't know, man. There's just something about it because it's it, it's farming in service to like decorate your farm and like you can get houses and then decorate inside your houses. So uh, it's like farm villain animal crossing without any of the villagers. Um, Got it. But you can play cooperatively with other players if you want. Um, it's genuinely a really great time. And like, there are like uh, every day is a season. So it's like four days per year, but it's it, like, it doesn't take keep track of the year or anything. Um, but each day slash season is seven minutes or 17 minutes. So mm. it cycles pretty quick and certain crops can only be grown during certain seasons and yada, yada, but it operates. It's very animal crossing like in the decoration, but also in that it, um, when the game is not running, the timers are still going. Um, oh. so like I'll plant something that, uh, takes 24 hours real time to grow and if I load it up at, like, 2 p.m. the next day, they'll be done. Um, mm -hmm. That kind of thing. So, it's just really good. It's so, why is this, like, game. deep, dark hole? Just because you're spending so much time I'm, with it? And it, it is currently ruling my life. It's, it is <laughs> dictating my schedule. <laughs> That's the problem. And so, it's, it's, my your, wife is it's your daughter. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The farm together farm, is my farm daughter. together is your child. <laughs> Congrats, new dad. <laughs> that yeah, that feels pretty accurate, actually. Um, yeah, man. And there's like, there's just so much. Like, all right, so not only are there crops, but there's also trees, so you can make orchards. There are also like a huge variety of farm animals, so that you can like do livestock stuff. And so, like, everything you're harvesting, um, and there's also fish. You can fish. Uh, so everything you're harvesting is giving you, like, like every fish I catch gives me, like, money so that I can buy more crops or more fish or whatever. But it also is giving me, like, a fish um, mat. And I can trade in mats at certain, like, stalls or whatever mm -hmm. for gems. And the gems are what you use to, like, do all the decorative stuff. Okay. Um, and then there's another currency, which is metals, and metals are done by finishing quests. Um, and they're also like really, like later game um, stalls that you can like purchase, where you can actually like buy metals. So like I have a stall where, all right. So I have, I have a station where I turn my apple mats uh, from my orchard into jam. And 10 jam uh, will get me a metal at another station that I have. So, mm -hmm. like, I'm harvesting all this stuff from my orchards, turning it into jam and jam into metals. And the metals are used to, like, get new stations or, like, new houses. Like, the really big, hard-to-get stuff is all metals. Mm -hmm. um, also, there are sprinklers in the game, and those cost metals. Uh, and they are very ineffective. Um, because like you don't have to water the plants for them to grow, but they will grow faster if you water them sure. and like it reduces the timers. And then if you water flowers, uh, like trees don't need any water, but if you water flowers, it increases the amount of money you get when you harvest, if you keep them watered. Um, so like it makes it worthwhile to keep them watered, but it doesn't reduce their timers, it just increases the amount of money you get. So I don't know. It's, it's a really good game. <laughs> it's very fantastic, great game, and you have a, like, farmer level, and then also a farm level. So, like, my farm level right now is 43, which is really high, which means I have almost everything, like, unlocked for purchase. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I'm farmer level 39, which is, like, you're unlocking cosmetic stuff that you change at, like, the main menu. So, like, you unlock new hairstyles and new clothes and new accessories okay. and stuff, and... You also have a, a pet, so I have this super cute little dog who's following me around, and he has an adorable little collar, and he's the best. Uh, and it's a very good game. 
<laughs> it was on the Steam sale, and I purchased it, and now I like. So I all right. I don't know how much more time I'm going to spend with the game, though, honestly, because I feel like I've almost unlocked everything. Right. And I'm reaching. I I was I was reaching a point where I was just doing the same thing. All right, cash, cash crop. Epic strats, cash crop beats. Dwight Schrute had it right. <laughs> beats are the cash crop. Uh, you can tell it's fake because no one in real life would want beats. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's how you know it's a video game. Um, but now that I've leveled up enough and like I have enough capital to back me up, uh, there's another cash crop that I have just discovered, and that is the artichoke. Hmm. Let me tell you about these artichokes, Shay. Um, all right. T- to compare, a beet costs me 800 gold to plant it, and I mm-hmm. harvest it for 1.37 thousand. So that's a mm-hmm. 530, uh, oh no, uh, 570 profit per beet. 570 per beet profit on the artichoke, and they take six hours to grow. On the artichoke, however, they take seven hours to grow, and you buy in for seven thousand gold. So wow! So it's, it's a big buy-in, right? Big money, no whammy. But you harvest for eight point four one thousand. So I, it's a uh, instead of getting a five hundred and seventy gold uh, profit per beat, I'm getting a one thousand four hundred and ten gold profit per artichoke. Yeah, but percentage-wise, isn't that a lower return? Like, wouldn't it make more sense to plant more beets? Because you can plant way more but that's beets the thing. for that's every the one thi- artichoke. But that's the thing, is in order you harvest your plants manually, Shay. You have a tractor that can harvest in a 3x3 three three grid, but you're harvesting manually. So the goal is not plant a bunch of cheap stuff to make a higher percentage return. It's plant mm-hmm. the really big stuff so you have to do less work for bigger returns. Yeah, I guess. I would still like to see the uh, the graph on that. Because that doesn't sound like that much of a of an uptick to make it worthwhile. It is very significant. Because, mm-hmm. well, also, you're also dealing with a limited amount of land. Like, you can expand by spending, like, a lot of diamonds, expand new areas and unlock more land. But, like, you're, in, in, you're effectively dealing with a limited amount of tiles on which you can plant as well. So, mm-hmm. like, if I want to spend nine hours a day continuously planting and harvesting crops, I might wind up with more money. Or I can only spend, like, a couple hours a day planting and harvesting crops and still make a buttload of money. Sure. I'm just saying epic boss strats, artichoke all the way. Good to know. Uh, farm together. For the literally ones of listeners that yeah. will play farm together. This will become... This is now a Farm Together strategy podcast. Please? Daily. Can it? Can we? <laughs> Can we do that? Um, no. I'm currently harvesting my fish right now. I will be back with you all in about 20. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I feel <laughs> but like. But I am harvesting my fish. If, if ever a game truly combines the, like, survival game side of things with the farming game side of things that's your uber game i mean you're like, not that wrong. would be like the only game you would ever need you're not wrong like that's the problem though is in survival games when there is farming it's usually it usually is easily broken and becomes overpowered and so mm-hmm. then like the survival game is no longer like like you're never under threat of starving sure. anymore but, like, that's something that actually subsistence does really well, where it takes a lot of water, and you also have to use ash as fertilizer, like, from your fires. Mm-hmm. Um, and it takes a long time uh, for the crops to grow. Uh, and so you're kind of, like, it's really just more of, like, a food supplement, and it's the only way to get certain foods. Because you can find the seeds in containers, but you don't find the actual foods growing out in the wild. So it's the only way to get certain foods, and now they have a thing where you can make actual meals, which give you like large amounts of those like permanent level increase, uh, permanent health and stamina increases. Anyways, that's subsistence. Subsistence is great. You should all super duper play it and support that because it's one dude who's making it, and it's really awesome. But also, farm together is super great. 
Um, <laughs> and they they have an event going on right now. It just started. I didn't even know they did events. And I loaded it up this morning. And right now I'm growing question mark fossils uh, to okay. harvest. So are there dinosaurs in this game? I don't know. That would be amazing. I have a feeling there aren't. I have a feeling you're just harvesting fossils and they're going to give me, like, the ability to purchase fossil-related uh, decorations, decorations for my houses with the gems that I earn in-game. Also, yeah. like, when I say gems, you aren't, like, there's no way to, like, spend real money on them. It's just right. through the game. But this game does have a lot of DLC in the form of cosmetics and... Uh, and uh, decoration packs, like themed stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it does have a lot of that. It has about thirty dollars worth of DLC uh, in terms of that stuff. Um, and how much did you spend on the game during the I, Steam I sale? I think during the Steam sale, I, it was like fifteen or something. I used my five dollar off on it, so yeah. I think I only paid like ten bucks for it. Um, but in terms of like dollars to hours. <laughs> spent uh i've had the game for a little over a week and i'm about 40 hours in awesome and i, I spent about I missed $10 those days on. yeah <laughs> that's uh summer is summer does well for me yeah all right i i need to i need to get off of this <laughs> we don't need to play a game while we're doing the podcast I'm gonna exit it'll be the... waiting for you it, it was helping me uh talk about it Sure. It's reminding me of stuff. Um, also, I'm not addicted. Damn it. <laughs> well, the only other thing that I've been playing, still playing Skyrim occasionally, and I only want to mention the bugged Miasma quest from last time where you get the Skull of Corruption staff or whatever. Yeah. I got it to work. I just waited like several hours of real life, or I should say in-game time, and I just went back to the area and crossed my fingers. And sure enough, he was still standing there. I talked to him, and he was able to progress it. So I uh, was able good. to accomplish that quest, so hooray. Haven't Sweet. had any more crashes, but I've also been avoiding that area in the west of Skyrim. So, yeah. Still fun to play occasionally. Kill, you know, 30 minutes when Penny's asleep. Skyrim good is time. very good. Very good. Uh, as far as what I've been watching, all the same stuff. So still watching Parks and Rec. Um... I think we're like halfway through season four now, so we're going through it pretty quick. Uh, I have slowed down on Smallville. I'm near the end of season three. I think one of the reasons I've slowed down, well, I think there are two reasons. The first is that it is becoming more focused on larger arcs of characters and not so much like the freak of the week, different super powered dude that Clark has to take down every week. Yeah, I mean that can only go for so long, right? True. You start to run out of ideas. But the larger narrative focus highlights the writing deficiencies of the show. And right. so like that stuff just isn't as interesting over a long period of time. Because right now like the biggest thing is like Clark, Lex Luthor, and Lionel Luthor. They're kind of like back and forth the whole time of like Lex is going crazy a little bit and Lionel is an asshole and is trying to learn about Clark's past and Clark is trying to stop both of them for eight episodes in a row. And so that just <laughs> feels, it start it starts to feel very drawn out and I'm trying to remember like what the resolution of this is. And I think that Lionel dies soon because I know in season four, Lex actually becomes, like, the villain, I think. Because th he marries Lana, who is the love interest for Clark. And I don't remember how they get there. Because right now, Lana's still in high school. <laughs> and Lex is older. And, like, it, to the show's credit, it is very subtle. But they have little moments. Because, like, Lex and Lana own a coffee shop together because Lex or Lana really wanted to do this and Lex kind of gave her some money and so that's kind of like what forces them to interact to talk about their coffee shop and all the drama that happens with it and they have a lot of like little subtle moments of like extended glances or like Lex saying something like Lana I'll always be there to help you and it, it doesn't feel as on the nose as I'm making it sound but that at least there it feels like they are building something but that thing they are building is kind of creepy because Lana is supposed to be like 17 right. and Lex is like in his mid-20s so that's like not awesome but uh 
I they, they end up getting married, and I think that happens next season. So we'll see how that goes because that sounds yeah, she not turns cool. 18, she's legal, man. <laughs> Slap guess. a ring on that. I guess. I yeah. I don't really remember how that goes. Got to get uh, you that hot coffee, mama. Yeah. Um. But the other big reason that I've slowed down on Smallville is because I watch a lot of Venture Brothers, and that's my I'm Killing Time show. I just finished season three of that show, so I'm I'm running through that one as well. And uh, it continues to be fucking amazing. I, like, by myself and laughing out loud watching it. Like, Kel- like I am just alone with Penny as I'm feeding her, holding her, trying to get her to go to sleep. And I'm laughing my ass off just in my house. And that is the nature of a, of a very funny show. Enjoy it while you can. Eventually, Penny's going to be old enough to comprehend the things you're yeah, watching. Yeah, and then I, then I cannot then watch it. cannot watch that. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, and then, obviously, Stranger Things 3 recently came out, and Kelly and I sat down to start it, and we watched the recap of Season 1 and the recap of Season 2, and realized, oh, we kind of just want to rewatch the whole thing. Because we've, we've seen Season 1 probably three times, because it is oh. amazing. and Because we watched it when it came out, and then we watched it again maybe six months later, and then we watched it again right before Season 2 came out. We only ever watched season two once because I found it pretty underwhelming overall. Same. And the recap of season two when we tried to watch it here was just, it was not good. It was like a trailer for season two. It didn't do a good job of like, if you don't remember all the minutia of what happened, it did not help you in that way. So season one, we remember all this stuff because it was awesome. We've seen it a bunch. But season two, having only seen it once, we wanted to rewatch season two before starting season three. And at that point, we were like, might as well also rewatch season one because it's super good. So that's what we did. And so instead of watching Stranger Things 3, we are now halfway through season two of Stranger Things. Uh, so I have been avoiding spoilers like the plague. I know you guys watched Stranger Things 3. And yeah, guess we what? Finished it. We can't really talk about it because I don't I don't want spoilers. Okay. But uh, I, I saw... A I'll, graphic. Tell you, I'll tell you that it's better than season two. Yes. I saw a graphic on IGN, which, like, I don't really give a shit about what IGN viewers think. But the poll was, what is the best season of Stranger Things? And season one was the winner. And season, it had, like, you know, almost 40% of the vote. And then season two had, like, 5%. And season three was close to season one. Which at least told me that the general consensus is that season three is pretty good. So that yeah. makes me feel a little bit better about it. Um, yeah, I mean, is there anything for you to say about Stranger Things 3 that doesn't involve spoilers? That's kind of a hard um, show that, to talk like, about. It was a lot more fun than I thought it would be. Yeah, given there the, are a like, couple characters that 4th of July that I'm, like, theme. I really want you to get eaten by a Demogorgon. Mm-hmm. But uh, there are, like, just a lot of really fun sequences and fun moments that, like, um, they're having a good time with their fiction. Cool. Um, so, yeah. And Maybe the I kind of saw the ending coming. What happens uh-huh. at the end? Um, but I have a theory, so okay. we can talk about that when you finished it. Yeah, I was gonna say. So hopefully, you, you will probably have the same theory. Um, also, I, I believe they have come out and said that um, they they think that seasons season four or five will be the last season of stranger things is what they've said that makes sense and if there are five seasons then i have a big theory for that gotcha uh yeah so okay I, my goal because right now we're half a few season two we're watching it a lot like we watch usually two episodes a night when we do commit to it and we'll i'm sure we'll watch some today so hopefully by next episode, we will have watched all of season three, and then okay. we can do a full spoiler thing, because then it'll have been like a month since it came yeah, out. Yeah, that's a I good time. Like yeah. that, that's okay to kind of deep dive on that. Um, but it is, it is, I'm enjoying season two more the second time than I did the first. My biggest annoyance is still Max, the redheaded girl. She's yeah. just a bad actor. It's not the character. She's just a bad actor. And that really, really sucks a lot of the energy out because the other kids are all so good. I mean, there's also uh, the whole, she's like... A little, she's a little better in season three. Well, I would hope so. She's older, but yes. Uh, that part of it, I was like, ugh. Um, and just generally, the story isn't as interesting or mysterious as the first season. I will say that, like, 
the scary parts are scarier in season two with the mind flayer thing, like, um, uh, whatever, what's the word? Like taking over will possessing will, I guess like that's that side of it. Like the scenes you see with that kind of stuff is like chill inducing. So that part of it, I enjoy more versus season one, which wasn't as scary, scary. It was maybe, okay. maybe more like jump scare with the Demogorgon thing, but this, um, is more like, intellectually scary which i enjoy um still like the whole other super powered girl eight or whatever is still like weird to me and i'm i mean without going into what happens in season three i would find it really hard to believe that they're gonna totally ignore all that stuff and even if it's not season three it would be eventually because that's such a huge revelation and it like that happens in the first episode of season two in the intro you see that there is another girl with superpowers. And then obviously Eleven goes and sees them towards the end of the season and meets her, whatever. But I have a really hard time thinking they only made that additional character and opened the doors to there being other superpowered people just for one episode for Eleven to have that kind of character moment with her. There's got to be some sort of thing in the future where they bring those characters in. So that would be, without having even seen season three, that's my theory on where the show is going in seasons four and five is bringing those other characters in in some way no it, assuming there are more than just the one yeah we'll talk about it next episode um yeah and then beyond that um we watched the new aziz ansari stand-up last night which was it's on netflix it was actually i thought it was super funny I'm not the biggest Aziz Ansari fan. I, yeah, I don't think he's funny. I actively disliked him in everything I had seen him do until Parks and Rec. And then I thought he was cute in Parks and Rec, but I still, like, the character annoyed me. And so I've, I've seen some of his other stand-ups since liking him in Parks and Rec. And I didn't think that any of them were amazing. This one, I thought it was super hilarious. It's very, very topical. Um... It's a lot about, like, how social media and the internet and this whole social justice movement amongst our generation and how a lot of it is bullshit. He talks a lot about racism, like, obviously in a funny way. Uh, And I just really enjoyed that. I am certainly not the most socially liberal person, and so I don't agree with all of his perspectives, but I still, like, found a lot of humor in the way that he was talking about them. Um, And he also, like, did you hear about his sexual harassment story this past year no so high level because we don't because the whole point is like who fucking cares but the high level is like he was on a date with this girl they had sex afterwards she came out and was like i wasn't super into it i didn't really want to have sex i didn't tell him that i wasn't into it i did it anyway but i felt kind of pressured because he's famous And we were having sex, even though I wasn't super into it. So he basically raped me. Right, guys? And thankfully, the internet was like, no. Like, you can't go along with this and say yes to having sex with someone. Then afterwards claim that he raped you because you weren't actually into it. That's not how that works. Like, what is he supposed to have done in that situation? Like, he's like... Do you want to have sex with me? She says, yes, they have sex. Afterwards, she's like, you raped me. No, that's not how that goes. But obviously, plenty of stupid people were like, ooh, this is still wrong what he did, blah, 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 which is total bullshit. But so he talks a little bit about that in the stand up and kind of has a a little it's not like a mea culpa thing, but it's kind of like an honesty of this happened. And he has several moments where like he kind of gets real about the way that we look at things and this particular thing that happened to him. But one thing that I really, really appreciated from this is he, instead of just being angry that this girl afterwards decided what he did was wrong and is trying to ruin his career because of it, frankly, ruin his life because of it, because he's in the, you know, in the the mainstream media, he now looks at it as an opportunity of like, is there something I could do differently moving forward? Is there a way I can be more conscious of the impact that I might have? Because at the end of the day, he isn't just a dude. He's famous. And there are additional implications that come along with a famous guy being around women. Like, there's additional layers to that. That it, it's just the reality. Whether it's fair mm. or not, 
it just is the reality. He isn't, he can't treat women the same way that a normal dude would treat women because they're more likely, one, to go along with him because he's famous, and two, come after him afterwards if he did anything wrong. So that, like, he, I feel like he legitimately took it as an opportunity to say, like, can I be a better person moving forward from this experience? Which I respect the hell out of. Because it's it's hard to like picture yourself in that such circumstance and coming out of it saying this was this I can see how this was positive for my life moving forward. I would have a very hard time not just being angry that this woman changed the rules of how this works. Yeah, well also like how could you not be kind of hurt by that, right? Like you right. thought this girl you thought things went well and she was into you and then like she was just fucking lying about it like that right. would hurt like yeah, he totally. has fu- he has fucking feelings too sure not just uh, yeah he's the guy in the situation but he has feelings too and that probably really hurt his feelings and made yeah, him feel definitely. shitty definitely definitely but anyway that that part of it i i enjoy just because like he got real on some stuff and i i respect that and I found it engaging enough because a lot of comedians have done that in the past. Mike Birbiglia in particular with all his kind of like one man shows that he has done recently. Um, Like the sleepwalk with me and stuff, which is still like one of my favorite standups. But like, I like that side of Aziz Ansari because I haven't really seen that before because he's so like millennial hip dude the way he talks about stuff, which is partially why he didn't really connect with me because I just don't enjoy that kind of personality. But this, he felt more like, like, he felt like an adult. I mean, he's, like, in his mid-30s or something. He felt more like an adult in this, which I really appreciated. And we also watched the third John Mulaney stand-up, which I've seen before. It was, it's, I think it came out, like, last year. But we watched the first two when Mom was in town several weeks ago. And so I was like, you know what, let's just watch the third one. We were looking for something to watch that night and didn't want to watch Stranger Things. And John Mulaney is fucking awesome. He is so funny, dude. Like... Just his personality and the way he, the, his storytelling ability. I could watch his shit all the time. So he's, yeah, check him out. All right. Um, yeah, you've been watching stuff? Um, in terms of like television shows, obviously Stranger Things season three. And then right. uh, my wife and I started Designated Survivor with okay. um, Kiefer Jack Sutherland. Bauer. Yeah. <clears throat> um, it's really interesting because he is. I'm used to I'm used to keep for Sutherland as Jack Bauer or maybe even a fake Solid Snake, right? Uh, or sorry, fake uh, Big Boss, not Solid Snake. Um, but in this, he's like a very he starts off almost like like an everyman kind of, but still even on the cowardly end of the spectrum. Yeah, um, and it's really weird to see him in that kind of a role, um, just because I'm used to him like murderizing terrorists yes uh so it's very interesting to kind of see him in a very different role Um, mom actually when we first had penny and mom stayed with us for a couple of days uh like to help overnight and stuff she wanted a show that she could watch as she was like staying up all night helping us with penny and stuff and so she started designated survivor okay and i watched most of the first episode with her and I was not interested in continuing just because it felt like a broadcast drama, just like really yeah. obvious dialogue, really yeah, like obvious people just talking about their feelings. As yeah, opposed to and that it. I have absolutely no more patience for in my yeah, life. There's quite a bit of that, but the concept I thought was really strong, and I like yeah, Kiefer it's Sutherland. Fascinating. Yeah, I would say his his wife is one of the weaker parts of the show, unfortunately, mm. and she does a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if she gets better or not, but um, we're only like six or seven episodes in. Um, but it's it's okay. There are a lot of threads. Sure. Um, yeah, it, it's interesting. So I don't know. That's something. Uh, what about uh, do you, did you watch any movies? Yes. So and I am like super pumped about this moving forward too. So like I said on Saturdays, most Saturdays I will be taking care of Penny most of the day while Kelly's at work. And it's hard to do stuff when that's happening just because I'm driven by her schedule and which kind of goes in like two and a half hour increments. Um, So mostly I'm watching things. Like I can't really play video games. I can't really clean around the house because I am interacting with her constantly. So last Saturday, I was like, you know what? I want to watch me some Harry Potter. So we watched Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. 
And she fell asleep like halfway through. And so I finished it when I was holding her while she was asleep. And, Sounds you know, like my it's, wife. it's not something that I'm like, I need to sit down and totally watch. Like I can get up and like, oh, I need to go change her. And I don't need to pause it and like that kind of stuff. Or like, yeah. oh, I'm paying more attention to her. Like, oh, I have her in tummy time and I'm playing with her on the ground as it's playing in the background. Because I've seen the movie a million times. I love it. And so I was like, you know what? This is my new thing. It kills a couple hours, which is a big benefit. And I, I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm not looking to like fast forward my one-on-one time with my daughter. But at the end of the day, like I have her for eight hours by myself where I can't really do anything. I need yeah. stuff to fill that time. <laughs> and I can't just watch Venture Brothers for eight hours. So last weekend, watched Sorcerer's Stone. Yesterday, watched Chamber of Secrets, which actually Chamber of Secret- Secrets took me like four and a half hours to watch because she was being... A bit of a pill yesterday. <laughs> and she was like screaming for probably 45 minutes nonstop, which builds the anxiety and isn't mm-hmm. my favorite thing. But uh, so I was not able to watch it when that was happening because I could not. I had to like zone and be like, I can get through this. Everything's going to be OK. So it took me a long time to watch Chamber of Secrets, which I also it is the second worst movie of the eight uh, but yeah, that's going to be my new Saturday thing. I'm going to watch a Harry Potter movie whenever I have her solo. So I'm really looking forward to continuing that. And it'll get me through six more Saturdays. Like that's when, when you're being a solo dad for a day a week, knowing that for two more months, I have three hours that are, that I can get through with a movie feels good. Maybe after that, I'll watch Star Wars or something. So yeah. Yeah. And you guys are watching more horror movies. Yeah, well, yes, continuing the trend. We watched Soul to Keep, which was so bad, I it's thought it was someone's... Name. I thought it was someone's, like, college thesis project for a film major. Wow. Like, it was filmed so terribly, um, and the acting was so bad. Don't watch Soul to Keep. Is it... I mean, is it a random D-tier, low-budget indie movie? Or, like, are there, like, named actors in it? Like, I did not recognize anyone in the movie. So maybe it is, I mean, it, maybe it yeah. is like a Some super weird amateur production. Film. Yeah. Yeah. Um and then we watched The Amityville Horror with Ryan Reynolds. Wow. Yeah. Uh it was really dumb. Okay. And not scary at all. <laughs> Which is not to be surprised uh not not surprising from a horror movie with Ryan Reynolds in it. Well, and this that I mean that's it's a pretty old movie, right? Like that's from It's like before, yeah, like 2005. Something. Yeah, it was before his resurgence when he was yeah. doing a bunch of shitty projects. Yeah. yeah. Um Yeah, I don't know. It <laughs> was not good. It's not that great. <laughs> Maybe don't watch that one either. <laughs> I feel like your recommendation for like 90% of the horror movies you guys watch is don't watch this. Yeah, I'm just saving people time. Yeah, but then I'm like, why are you guys watching these if they're all so terrible? <laughs> Somebody has to, Shay. No, no, they don't. <laughs> well, but what do you say do we talk watch about some Stranger news? Things 3? Yes. Do yes, watch that. I'm very, very much looking forward to Stranger Things 3. Yeah, we can also. We, uh, yeah. We can chat about some news if you Queer want. Queer Eye comes out soon. I think this Yeah, month, I saw that July 19th. Yeah, yeah, so definitely looking forward to watching that as well and, and crying some big alligator tears, I am sure. Yeah. So, Nintendo Switch. There's been rumors for months about them making new models, making a more handheld-focused, cheaper model, making an XL or, like, you know, Xbox One X version of the Nintendo Switch. And Nintendo kept denying everything, kind of. Um, Well, no longer, because they have announced the Nintendo Switch Lite, which is uh, a handhold only. It cannot do the dock at all. So it is purely a handhold console, which is a really important distinction for people people to make. Because the rumors were that the Joy-Cons were going to be attached to the screen, but that you could still dock it like you could a regular Switch and then play on your television with a a, a wired controller or a third-party controller or something. Not true. Handheld only. Which to me is the death knell of the 3DS. Because they are now saying that their main console, there is a handheld only version of that. Why would they ever make a 3DS game moving forward? 
Um, so yeah, so you can't separate the Joy-Cons. It doesn't have the HD rumble included. Uh, it's it's kind of like the other big cheapening thing that they are doing to make right. it less expensive to, to make. Uh, it is $200. It is coming out September 20th. You can get it in gray, green, or yellow. The green is kind of that like turquoise almost green that I do not care for. If uh, I was going to get this, the yellow one I think looks pretty pretty dope. Uh, but the gray is also totally fine. It looks a little cheap to me. Um, and maybe that's just because it is a one solid thing and nothing folds or moves on it. Where it just looks a little bit like a little kid's toy. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. I, obviously, I have a Switch. This There's no real reason for me to get this. I don't have any no. issues playing my Switch in handheld mode. This is a little bit smaller than playing your regular Switch in handheld mode. Um, but yeah, I mean, for someone that already has a Switch, there isn't a ton of value in this. Uh, I, at least I haven't heard the use case from folks about why they also need to buy this. But yeah, for folks that don't have one or only play on the go, I could, I could, I could, guess I could see that. Um, they're also doing a Pokemon Sword and Shield edition, which actually looks pretty cool. It's like a light gray with a bunch of the red and blue on it. It comes out on November 8th. It is not packaged with the game. The game comes out November 15th, but it is it's the same price. It's 200 bucks. So if you're super into Pokemon, you're willing to wait another two months, you can get the Pokemon Sword and Shield version for the same price, which is pretty neat. Usually those special versions are extra. Um, yeah, but they're so also cool usually they're bundled with the game. That's true. That's true. They have not talked about the XL. They specifically said we have no plans to talk about another different version of the Switch this year, which doesn't mean it won't happen next year, but that's kind of where they are. So right now, the Nintendo Switch Lite is the only other version of the Switch that you can get. Anything else about that? No. I mean, It's like, pretty like, you know... There's nothing yeah. really that special about it. It's just a handheld version of the console. Yeah, it's just a cheaper way for people to get into the Switch ecosystem. Yeah. Um, talking about Pokemon, Pokemon Sword and Shield, we've talked about the Dynamax, which is like the big versions of the Pokemon. There's also Gigantamax, which at the, I'm, I'm just kind of like, come on, guys. <laughs> like, Yeah, I'm on. just sitting over here like, shut the fuck up. Just <laughs> shut the fuck up. It is an even bigger version of the Dynamax, and only some, only a few Pokemon will have access to the Gigantamax, which gives them a new move. It changes the appearance of the Pokemon. There's a trailer I'll link in the Game Informer article in the show notes. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's stupid. Like, I'm willing to give the Dynamax thing a shot, but if, if you keep layering on additional th- versions of Dynamax, like, that just gets confusing. It's stupid. It's it's annoying that they're doing this. Also in this trailer, they showed that there will be version-specific gym leaders, which is an interesting idea. Uh, also, there will be different Pokemon in each version, too. And you can still buy Pokemon Sword and Shield bundled as one game for a little bit cheaper than buying them separately. But, like, I'm not sure how I feel about that. Because I know in some of the games, I think it was, like, X and Y or Black and White. Or maybe it was even before that, like in Sapphire and Ruby, the enemy factions were named differently, right? Yeah, yeah. wasn't that so Ruby, Ruby and Sapphire? And Sapphire there was um, Team Magma, Aqua and, Team Aqua. and Magma. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they've done a little bit of that, but like that wasn't core to the experience. Like it was really just it was Aqua or Magma, and some of the guys had different Pokemon, but it wasn't like a big thing. But in this, I think the two that they showed, one was like poison type and the other was rock and ground maybe i don't really remember it is it's in that same gigantamax trailer but like i don't know i just don't know how i feel about that much of a difference between versions and we'll Well, see if you're gonna have two versions you should make it like significantly different i guess i guess but like to me like worst case scenario is uh, pokemon shield has more exclusive pokemon that i think are cool but Pokemon Sword has like gym leaders and additional exclusive stuff that I think are cool. And so I can't get the best of both worlds. That's my fear. Gotcha. So we'll hey, see how Maybe they should together. just sell one fucking game. Yeah. But then they wouldn't make as much money. Nope. <laughs> and their argument is like, oh, it encourages trading between players because you can trade. And I'm like, ah, you're full of shit. You just want people to buy two copies of the same game. Chasing those dollars, man. Yep. It's life. 
It's life. Chasing those dollars. So here's something that is obvious. Um, obviously, in the wake of Microsoft acquiring yet another big studio um, in Double Fine, folks have been asking Sony because Sony was an 83. We don't really know what's going on with them. They've only talked in vague terms about the PlayStation 5. Like, hey, what are you guys up to? Do you have any plans of acquiring studios? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> because, duh. <laughs> uh, they did say that Rather than focusing on like big hitters like um, Microsoft getting Obsidian and Double Fine and Ninja Theory, that Sony is more focused on younger, smaller studios, which I think is interesting. And I don't know like why specifically that's their strategy. We'll see, obviously, if that is true or not. Uh, but I thought that that was an interesting differentiation from what Microsoft is doing. Sony has a and has always had a very diverse, strong stable of first-party studios and, frankly, yeah. second-party studios. The difference, though, is those second-party studios are reaching the end or have already reached the end of exclusivity deals. So if you look at a studio like that game company that had that three-game that three game exclusivity deal with Sony of Flower Flow and Journey, they're past that. Now they're doing a mobile game. They can do whatever they want moving forward. You look at a studio like Insomniac, who for years was, even though they were not owned by Sony, they had that exclusivity deal with the Ratchet & Clank series, and then they broke out on their own to do... What was that game that was bad? That four-player game? Fusion? Or... F Fuse? Fuse? No. What? Insom before they did Sunset Overdrive, they did another game. They did that was a third party game, and it originally was going to be like super cell shaded and shit. I do. And then it know. ended up not being that. I'm looking it up right now because I need to know. Um, I'm sure it's probably at the end of this list because it was bad. I want to say that it was F yeah Fuse. It was Fuse, 2013. It was a four-player, third-person, Gears of War-inspired shooter. It sucked. Huh. That's why you don't remember it. Yeah. Um, but then, obviously, they did Sunset Overdrive as an exclusive with Microsoft. And then they did Spider-Man as an exclusive with Sony. They've done the new Ratchet & Clank game with Sony. So they're kind of, like, playing both ends. And they don't seem like a studio that would be interested in Sony buying them out because they want to do multiple stuff. Anyway, point being, Sony has always had a lot of second-party studios. Even, like, if you look at... Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. But uh, those studios are doing more third-party stuff than t than normal. Now with Microsoft acquiring a bunch of studios, it's beginning to feel like Sony doesn't have as much going on. Uh, especially as they're kind of like looking forward and focusing on the PS5, not really announcing any other new games for PlayStation 4. The talk becomes like, is Sony falling behind? So it makes sense for them to try to go and acquire some some folks. I just don't see like them acquiring a studio that's done one game or like maybe not even done a game before. That's not really like news making. Like people aren't going right. to pay attention to that the way that they are. Oh, Microsoft got Obsidian, you know. So it just feels like a weird strategy for them to take. Uh, there are plenty of studios out there that they could acquire that could be cool. A studio like Insomniac. Um, I just don't really know that I see that happening. So we'll see. Hopefully more news in the next year before PS5 comes out. Okay, so there was a big news story that ran around CD Projekt Red where there was a translation of an interview that said that CD Projekt Red had two other Cyberpunk 2077 games in the works. And that wasn't true. <laughs> really, it was that they have three teams working on Cyberpunk 2077. Not that they right, have three different games in development. Uh, originally, Game Informer ran a story like speculating on what those other games could be. Presumably, one of them is a sequel. And they're like, oh, could they be doing a multiplayer or like Battle Royale mode of Cyberpunk 2077? Which sounded really stupid. But th this is more just a clarification because I know that was making the rounds. People talking like, oh shit, they're, wor they're building this bigger universe of games with Cyberpunk punk and they are not at least not no yet. they're not at least not yet amazon is making a lord of the rings mmo so they obviously have their new show that's in the works this game 
allegedly will not be directly tied into the show. Like, it won't be an adaptation of the show. Just obviously set in the, the Lord of the Rings universe. Which is interesting to me that they aren't going to tie it into the show. That seems like a pretty obvious marketing opportunity. But I could also yeah. see them not wanting to... Like, if they, are, if they actually want to make this a good game and not just a cash grab... I get why they would say, like, treat this differently and use it as more of an, uh, an opportunity to just build the brand and not specifically tie those two things together. The rumor that I had seen was that this was going to be developed as being free-to-play. I haven't seen any, like, confirmations or quotes around that specifically, but that would also make sense for them to do a free-to-play just because it's, one, it's an MMO, and two, it's related to them pushing this television show so they want to get people involved in the the universe again so it'll just be interesting to see come come together amazon allegedly is super invested in this lord of the rings show like they want it to be the next game of thrones they're throwing a shit ton of money at it so hopefully they do the same thing with the game because lord of the rings is a great universe for a video game and not many games have truly capitalized on that especially when it comes to like online MMO style games the few Lord of the Rings games like that that have been made have been not good yeah so we shall see as I mentioned at the top San Diego, San Diego Comic Con is coming up we'll be talking about all the big news from that in the next episode but Marvel's Avengers Crystal Dynamics new game that was unveiled again at E3 this year will be at San Diego Comic Con they will have multiple panels with all the actors and they'll be showing new gameplay you aren't going to be able to see the gameplay unless you're at San Diego Comic-Con. They will not be live streaming the trailers or the gameplay at the show. Probably because it looks bad. Yeah, I, like San Diego Comic-Con, there are always instances of like, we're going to show off a scene or a trailer of a new movie and we're not going to release it to the public until well after. That is common. But... It being about, like, a video game... Like, you can make the argument that that just follow the, follows the same trend of how they treat the movies. But also, given the tepid reception yes. of stuff at E3... Yes. It is easy to craft the narrative that this game is not coming together well, so they're avoiding showing the larger population more gameplay of the game. I don't know, dude. We, we'll see. I just know from what I saw and heard about the game at E3, it seems bad. So, yeah. and that is a huge bummer because Crystal Dynamics, they're a talented studio. It's the fucking Avengers. Be a big bummer if that game is bad, but it seems like it's bad. Well, I mean, anytime you're working with a property that is that prolific, there's a lot of red tape yeah, you got to go through. Uh, dealing with the rights holders and all that. So, I mean, it depends. It, it depends because not all instances is, is it like that. Uh, historically... Star like for like Lucas Arts, I get, it kind of depends on what the game was, but like Star Wars games, a lot of those games did not have a bunch of oversight from folks at Lucasfilm. So there are right. instances where like if they believe in the video game medium, if they believe in what the team is doing, them giving more creative freedom. I will say that Disney has not traditionally been one of those correct studios or you know to to let creators do what they want to do in those universes. So might make more sense if if they specifically are tying the strings together of this game where they should not be this is i mean this it's an age old argument of let creatives be creative dudes that wear suits you're not creative that's not your job so stop trying to force creatives to do what you think works yeah it, it never succeeds and yet they continue to do it. it's it's a power trip thing it just is the reality um okay Netflix, we talked about this last episode as well. Like, they have a bunch of new animated shows in the works around Jurassic World, um, Magic the Gathering, and now they're also doing a Cuphead show. The two folks, the two dudes that built the game, are on as executive producers. It's going to have the same animation style as the game. Obviously, we'll focus on Cuphead and Mugman as, as central characters. No release date, no specifics around it, just that they're, they're making a Cuphead show. Uh, this ties in really well to an email that we'll get to in a sec from Steve. Uh, but yeah, just it seems like video games are becoming more accessible in other mediums. Because, uh, you know, there's always been a lot of video game movies and they've always been trash. But it seems like a lot of television shows now are like dipping their toes in there. Uh, particularly from like animated, an animated show perspective. Which I think is cool. Like, I could, I can easily see how Cuphead could make for a cool animated show. 
It like yeah, just the characters and the world, the animation style, it all like fits pretty well like, together. Do you give them voices. Yeah, that's do a good they point. Speak. That's a good. Point. I feel they probably have to, right? Or is it like the, um, like something happens and then there's like the little like real silent where film, it, like, the silent film where it says it like has the dialogue written. I think that would probably be pretty hard to sustain on a television show that could go for yeah. multiple years. I feel like they probably have to talk. Yeah, but they could yeah, have like probably. the Looney Tunes style to it, like really over the top. Right. I could see it being cute. Or like like an old Popeye, like the yeah, the very the the tin can voices. Yeah, totally, totally. Come on, Cuphead. Uh, and then finally, new trailer for the live action Mulan movie. This is mostly relevant just because it's yet another live a- a- live action adaptation of a classic animated Disney film. I watched. Uh, it's relevant it. because Mulan is in uh, Kingdom Hearts two. <laughs> sure. Did you watch this trailer? No. I My wife is super into Mulan. It's one of her favorite Disney movies, which makes sense. It's like this awesome not princess female-led Disney movie, which yeah, is it was very like the rare. Yeah, one of those. Yeah, cuz she loves Pocahontas too for a very similar reason. It's very yeah. empowering for females, whatever. Don't no, not whatever dismissively, but uh yeah, so I get why she loves it. This is seems like it Unlike the other live-action Disney adaptations, this feels like they're just making a Mulan movie based on the actual story of Mulan, which is a historical story in Asia, versus it being tied really in any way to the animated movie. Because, like, Mushu, Eddie Murphy's character, is not in this movie. Not even with Eddie Murphy, but, like, that the little dragon, he's not in this movie. The main dude that likes Mulan, the captain, whatever his name is, he's not in this movie. Like, it's and it's it feels dichotomous because I watched the trailer and it feels and looks a lot like the Disney movie. Like, a lot of the shots and the vistas seem very similar to the animated movie. But okay. the story and the characters are not at all really tying into it. Except for, like, the broad strokes of... It's this girl who goes undercover as a man to join the army, blah, blah, blah. Because the biggest thing is, like, in this live-action movie, Mulan is, like, a fucking superhero. She's, like, twisting her sword around, doing flips and shit. And that was not at all the point of the animated movie. Like, she was just this average person who cared so much about fighting for her country and was not allowed because of her gender that she went and joined anyway in a secretive way. She wasn't, like, way better than all the dudes were. She worked harder and became awesome because of that. But in the movie, like, it it, it looks like a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon style. Over-the-top, right. you know, eight Japanese, Chinese, whatever, action movie where she's, Tables like, doing spin flips and shit. Yeah, a bunch of wire tricks. So it just feels like it's not really capturing what the, 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 the theme of the animated movie So I don't know. It just seems weird to me that this is even related to the Disney version of it. Maybe just it's just because Disney owns the rights. But this does. I feel like people that go into this expecting to see the recent Beauty and the Beast or the Lion King are gonna be like, this is not at all. Like, and there's no songs in this. It's just a story-driven movie. Like, there's no singing, which again is a core tenet of these Disney animated films. So I don't know. I, I'm just I'm not interested at all in this, uh, other than if it is a really awesome one of those, you know, Japanese kung fu movies, which I yeah, do that like. kind of makes me more interested because I went <laughs> from not gonna watch this to maybe I would. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, I could see that. Do you have any attachment to the the original Mulan? I'm, it's a fine movie. Yeah. It's That's kind of where I am. Like, I like it, but it's not in my upper echelon of Disney movies, but I no. like it. It's more like I'm kind of bummed for my wife, who could have been really excited to see this adaptation happen, and now, like, isn't really anything like the movie that she loves, which is kind of right, a bummer. Right, right. And that's kind of all the news. So not, like, a ton of big stuff to talk about, but that's just kind of where we are post-E3, pre-San Diego Comic-Con. There's a big rumor about Marvel announcing phase five of the Marvel movies. And I think like the list is like black Panther two, captain Marvel two, 
uh, Shang Shi, which who's a uh, I don't know if he's Chinese or Japanese, but he's like a kung fu guy. Him doing a solo movie, doing the a Black Widow prequel movie. Um, yeah, that I think. And then the, oh, Eter- the Eternals, which there have been a bunch of casting rumors amongst them. Oh right, uh, Millie Bobby Brown or whatever her name is, Eleven from Stranger Things. And Angelina okay. Jolie is also rumored to be in that as well. So uh, that's the big rumor is that Marvel's going to unveil what their next slate of Marvel movies are. I would guess they're also going to talk about the Loki television show they're doing, the uh, Winter Soldier and Falcon show that they're doing, which also see... Wait, did you see... You didn't see Endgame yet, have you? No. Okay, I don't want to reveal what happens in that, but there's a thing that happens in that that makes a Falcon and Winter Soldier show sound weird to me, but I'm sure they're being intelligent about how they're going about setting that up. But yeah, point being, there's going to be a lot of that kind of shit for us to talk about next episode. There just isn't a bunch of news right now. We're in that summer slump, as it were. Um, I am just now realizing I didn't do a hate of the week, and I feel like that's probably okay. I'm not super passionate about hating on something right now. Um, Yeah, I have to do a bunch of chores today, and that's going to suck on a Sunday. My so summer's halfway over. That's that's a okay. I I was gonna say that's a solid thing to hate, but it's been a while already, and you still have a while. Doesn't feel like it, man. I get, but that's it's like you have a it's a couple of months. That's a long time to like have all the free time in the world. Well, no, I I have one month left. Yeah, like, that's almost a long time. <laughs> no, <laughs> I need like another five years of vacation. Fair enough. Uh, but as I mentioned, we do have an email from our good buddy Steve in DC. Steve writes in and says, With all of the terrible decisions Hollywood keeps making for video game movies, let's see if we can do better. What ideas for a video game property do you think would translate well to a movie or TV show? Um, Cuphead, I would say, is probably a good one. Um, <laughs> Uncharted. Uh, maybe like um, The Witcher. Yeah. I, well, actually, I don't know. I, well, like, that does sound If you cast bad. a good actor, maybe. I yeah. can see The Witcher being good. No, but uh, Steve says, for example, I would love to see an Overwatch Netflix series where each character gets a standalone thirty to sixty minute episode backstory, uh, with some being combined, like Junkrat, Junkrat and Road Dog, or Genji and Hanzo, which I vaguely know what those characters are. You played Overwatch, right? You know who it's those Road characters Hog, are. Road Hog Shay. What did I say? Road Dog. <laughs> Road Dog is a better name. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, these will be, uh, th- or sorry, these will result in a f- in thirty ish episodes that finishes with an Avengers Endgame style two hour movie that is Overwatch assembling together to combat Talon. Is Talon a bad guy or is it the bad Talon is the enemy faction? Faction. Okay. Would love to hear both your ideas and discussion. Thanks for the pod, Steven DC. Um, so yeah, it's hard to say like. I think this would make this video game would make a good movie just because historically video games make shitty movies. And so like I could say, oh, The Last of Us. Like that would make a really good movie. But it could only make a good movie if done well. <laughs> like there you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like and that like that might sound obvious, but I feel like it's worth saying that are there universes that could translate well to TV shows and movies? Absolutely. Like 100%. There are thousands of them. But that doesn't mean I would have any faith that they would actually be good. I'm kind of more interested, and I'm just now discovering this, and so I didn't prep for it. But I kind of would be more interested in attaching creators and actors to these series. Well, that yeah, that's, I think what, could that's help what I was going to say. Good. Yeah, that's what I was going to say is like, what is a property you would like to see, and who yeah. would you think needs to be involved to yeah. like help uh, make this like envisioning come to fruition because that side of it i think is more important than just yeah it being an interesting world because like those things go so easily together video games are so immersive just because of the medium that they are this extended time you spend with them which is way longer than a movie way longer than most tv shows too they're just the worlds are by design filled out so much more so there's so much detail that you could have so like i could just rattle off like a bunch of my favorite video games that i would make great movies or TV shows like Bioshock, which has been rumored for a while. I think it would probably make a better TV show than a movie. Um, and uh, Metro is another one that I wrote down, which would make a really cool 
thriller horror kind of TV show, but it really yeah. is intrinsic to like who's going to be involved in those things. Like if you're going to make a Bioshock show or movie, Ken Levine has to be creatively involved in some way to capture the true essence of what defines like thematically what defines those worlds. Right. Um, so yeah, I don't know. Did you have any specific examples? Um, well, cause I know they're making that uncharted movie. Yeah. Uh, with uh, uh, Tom Holland, right? But I, I like I kind of want an Uncharted movie that's like directed by Spielberg, so it's like as close to old Indiana Jones as possible, mm-hmm. just with the Uncharted characters. The only thing I would say is like, like I kind of want that older style of cinema, but like, does Uncharted. that work now? Like, like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, it, like it works for me. Was like complete. Uh, Crystal Skull was complete dog shit. That movie was awful. Yeah. But is that because they tried to replicate old school Indiana Jones? Or is it because they tried to modernize it too much? Like, I don't know why that movie was bad. But like Jake Gyllenhaal. Was Jake Gyllenhaal? In? Jake Gyllenhaal wasn't in that Wait, movie. Not, not Jake Gyllenhaal. What's his fuck? Uh, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. Um... I mean, there are way more problems than just Shia LaBeouf, but that was certainly one of them. But that, I guess that's my response to, like, making an Uncharted movie like old school Indiana Jones. I'm not convinced that would work nowadays. Like, I, I love the Indiana also Jones also a big movies, part of the problem with Crystal Skull was that, like... George Harrison Lucas was Ford. involved? <laughs> well, <laughs> Harrison Ford, good-looking dude, but he's fucking old. Yeah. Indy is this young, scrappy, charismatic guy. That's true. And, like, Crystal Skull was, like, old, bedraggled, like, worn down Indy. And, like, that's not as fun to watch. It was also too silly. And it was silly in the wrong ways. Yeah, yeah. Like, not silly in, like, a this is our budget, but silly in, like, trying to, like, uh, create humor from situations where you don't. Like it's not quippy humor. It yeah, was like, like the, it was like more like slapstick, stupid yes. stuff. Yes, the original Indiana Jones movies were very, uh, like making light of the yeah. drama that was happening versus Crystal Skull, which was more like wink, wink, nudge, nudge at the camera. Right. Which that it just did not play. It was so yeah. much of the, so much of it was so stupid. So, so in that like sense, an, an Uncharted like like that, where like right. making light of the drama that is happening, you can still have your heavier moments. Um, but I would like Spielberg attached because, like, maybe he could recapture some of that old indie magic. Fair. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not a big horror movie guy, so it's hard for me to like say like, oh, here's a director I would like to see take on Bioshock or Metro. Yeah. Just because I don't have, I'm not as involved in those circles. Um, trying to think of like another example that would be cool. So even, like, look at Overwatch. So it, the example that Steve gives here. Like, if it was going to be a Netflix series that leads to a big crossover movie, are you know more about Overwatch than I do? Like, is the, are there creatives or even... I guess w- it would have to still be animated. Like, you can't really do a live-action version of this. But, like... Well, I mean, if you do a live-action version, it's just... It's essentially porn. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> what, what what if all right? What if it's a television show cast entirely with porn from, actors, uh, porn actors <laughs> that I have already sure. done Overwatch cosplay? Porn. Well, yeah, I am one hundred percent sure every single Overwatch character is all has already been represented in pornography. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think I want to see the Roadhog porn. <laughs> Not you wouldn't even me. have to change his name. Like porn adaptations, you change the <laughs> names of stuff to make them sound more sexual. Roadhog, that's plenty sexual. No, that's Road it? Dog, Shay. Road Dog. It's, yeah. it's Road Dog. <laughs> <laughs> but like, I mean, it's it's an obvious example because Steve even alludes to the Avengers Endgame thing. But like, if the Russo brothers did an Overwatch Netflix series, like those two, two things are really easy to tie together. Oh, okay, here we go. Metro. If they were going to make a Metro television series, have the Duffer Brothers do it. The Stranger Things guys. Mm. No. no. Like, Met- Metro's not silly or quippy or anything like that at all. It's very self-serious. Like, but there's think, no but, humor in it. But, it, yeah, but I'm not, I'm not trying to just put them in a box where they're only allowed to do 80s sure. jokey sci-fi it's more like their directorial ability to capture mood in their universe and really build us a sense of place i think would be really cool for something like metro or bioshock if they were going to make a television show 
Like that okay. that sense of world building and immersion, they've succeeded immensely well with Stranger Things. All right. Okay. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like what other stuff I would like to see. Yeah, I just don't know a lot of like directors or actors' names. I'm just really bad with that. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of hard to like think of this stuff on the fly because the original question didn't include the creatives involved. But I feel like that's a really important part of this yeah. versus just saying that like, yes, a Skyrim television show would be really cool. But like any video game could be a really cool television show. It really hinges on who would be involved. Right. So let's be lazy and throw it back at the audience. Write in like if you have a really cool idea. <laughs> For a, a television show based on a video game, who would be involved? Like, who would you cast in the roles? I'd be curious to hear. And maybe that'll spark some more ideas for us in the next episode. But that's going to do it. Bit of a truncated episode today, which, again, I think is okay, just given the the, the slow nature of news. Um, let's wrap this baby up with something we don't hate. So I will say, while I hate that my Sundays are now chore days, I do not hate that my Saturdays are chilling with Penny days. I enjoy That's that time. Nice. Yeah. Um, I don't hate soda. I I have been drinking a lot of it because it's the summer and I'm just at home all day. And I it is I I've been drinking a water this whole podcast and I cannot wait to crack open an ice cold Mountain Dew Code Red. Yeah, my bummer. So I limit myself to because during the week I usually have an energy drink just for work. Uh, and so I'm not allowed to have, I'm not allowed to have multiple sodas in a day. And I try to have at least a couple of days in the week where I don't have anything. So like mostly during the week, if I have an energy drink, I cannot have a soda. And so weekends typically are my soda days. Those are my two days where I'm allowed to have a soda on a Saturday and on a Sunday. And it's amazing. I love it. But I feel like I very quickly am left with like only a quarter of it left. Cause I'll usually have like a Mountain Dew at lunch. So I'll, I'm going to have a Mountain Dew after we finish the podcast and I go eat something. And I'm quickly going to be almost done with it. And then it's like 1.30. And I'm like, I have the whole rest of the day where I can't <laughs> have another soda. And that like depresses me a little bit. I'm not enjoying it enough in the moment, I think. Just get two liters. And then it's like <laughs> a two liter a day. That is, no. <laughs> it's still one soda. <laughs> I one don't container. think my taskmaster would okay that idea. I You're will your have own a bottle. Man, damn it. I will have like a 16 ounce bottle sometimes versus a can, uh, which yeah. is a bit of a cheat. But I think that's okay because I'm not only going to have 12 ounces of the bottle because then that's still that's going to go to waste after a week. Right. So yeah, or like, ooh, I haven't had a surge in a while. If I'm going to run out, maybe if I have to run out to gas station, I'll get a surge because those are those are good. Like I'm always in the mood for a Mountain Dew. Don't get me wrong, but sometimes it's nice to not do that. And so sometimes I'll have a surge instead. What is very close to a surge is the Kroger brand Citrus Drop Extreme. That is very close to a surge. Okay. Because like they, I don't think they sell surge here, but that is it is. I have not seen surge in a, a millennia. Really? In this area, but Citrus Drop Extreme very close. Okay, it's good to know. Yeah, I haven't bought like new twelve packs of soda in a long, long time because I will just. Like, I usually will go on a Sunday to the gas station to get my energy drinks for the week, and I'll usually pick up a couple of Mountain Dews or whatever that will last me for the next couple of weeks. So I haven't bought an actual box of 12-pack cans, but we always shop at Publix, and Publix has their own knockoff sodas too, which I haven't yeah. wanted to try. They're way cheaper, obviously. I think it's like 2 bucks for a 12-pack. Right. But yeah, like, the wife and I, we're getting groceries today, and normal soda is, quote-unquote, on sale sure. for three for thirteen dollars, right? Uh, That's but bullshit. they're like their house brand stuff is quote unquote on sale for two for five. Yeah, so yeah, we're just gonna go because th- we still have some stuff left over from when we got soda a couple weeks ago. So we're just gonna get like two 12 packs of house brand stuff, and yeah. Citrus Drop Extreme is one of those. My thing is like I don't drink it enough to where I need to con- be considerate of the price. Like, I don't, I don't want to like, because I only get them in small chunks, I want to make sure I maximize my enjoyment. So I'm not going to go buy an off brand that I'm going to like less and waste my soda experience on something I like less. Cause I've done that in the past, like, because I'm trying to cut back on sweets in general, just cause I got to do something about me being a piece of shit. But like, we'll get 
ice cream and I'll try a new th- a new flavor of ice cream and I take a couple bites and I'm like, oh, I'm not super into this. I'm not going to continue eating that because I don't want to waste my garbage snack on something I'm not enjoying fully. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? So yeah. I'm getting better at that because that used to not bother me. I'm like, it's at the end of the day, it's still ice cream. It's not terrible. It's fine. Of course I'm going to eat the entire pint. No more. <laughs> I'll wait and go get a pint that I like. Maybe the core problem is I shouldn't eat an entire pint of ice cream, period. <laughs> Maybe that's the real takeaway from all of this. But all no, right, it's Mr. More... Moneybags, who can afford the nice stuff. <laughs> yeah. You can to... afford to throw away half a pint of ice cream. <laughs> no, I'm saying I'm over here sitting. just trying to live, damn it. I I'm just not... need the calories. <laughs> it's going not back true. in the freezer. I'll, like, I'll eat the rest of the pint later. It's yeah. I'll eat an entire pint in a sitting. That's what needs to end. <laughs> As I, I say I, that out loud. I do that, that sounds... with Rita's, the frozen ice. Okay. Uh, they do buy three quarts, get one free. Oof. And I will sit there and eat like half a quart. Because it's just ice and sugar. Yes. So You good. say that like that's a defense. Like, it's not that bad. Well, no, like, it's, it's just a filling. pint of sugar. It's, <laughs> but it's not filling in any way. Because it's just true. like water and then that's true. calories. Yes. Um. <laughs> that's the that's the problem with sugar. Sugar is not filling. That's part of the the reason that it is bad. Hell yeah. <laughs> you you know what else I have sitting next to my desk? An entire box of fun dip. Oh god. And I just I grab like a packet of that every day. Oof. I have just a packet of fun dip. It's a powdered for those of you who don't know what fun dip is, it is flavored powdered sugar Mm -hmm. like little grains of sugar and you eat it this is not how i eat it but you eat it with a sugar stick yes that you suck on the sugar stick so it's wet and then all the powder sticks to it and then you suck on that and that's how you get the powder however um i have evolved to a higher plane of existence so what i do is i just tear off the top and I just pour the sugar into my mouth, and then I eat the stick afterwards. <sighs> I am the Highlander! <laughs> there can be only one! Whenever my wife gets on to me about eating <laughs> bullshit... Just play her that I just need to call you up. Audio. Have you talked to her for a few minutes about what your lifestyle is? Yeah. <sighs> <sighs> Dude, I'm not gonna make it, man. I'm not gonna be okay in to like tomorrow. three months. Yeah, yeah, that's a whole other layer that, like, I haven't. And this is probably a poor reflection on me. It hasn't sunk in yet that has really made me change. But like, I have a kid now. I need to be around for her, and I need to be healthy for her. And so that pressure weighs on me but still isn't making me do anything about it. So <laughs> I need additional pressure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a good place to end. Nice positive note that Kyle's going to yeah. die when he's 40 and maybe I'll make it to 50, hopefully, so I can see my kid graduate high school. We'll see. You know what I'm going to do today? I'm going to take a Citrus Drop Extreme and I'm going to dump some Fun Dip into it. Oh, God. To see what happens. That sounds like that legitimately sounds gross. Yeah, I, I'm not actually going to do that because it would probably, like, <laughs> blow up or something. What I'm going to do is mow the lawn and do some other outside shit, so at least I'll sweat a lot. That's something. That'll balance yeah. out the Mountain Dew I'm going to have. I do have to go finish mowing Mom's lawn. I only did half of it while she was out of town, and my foot was really giving me trubs. Mm-hmm. So I have to go do the other half of it. I'm going to do that today. Well, let's end it so we can go get this bullshit done, and then maybe sure. we can both do something fun later on, like maybe I'll watch Stranger Things or something. Hooray. This is my life. <laughs> I look forward to watching a television show I've already seen. Uh, okay. That's the end of the podcast. Check out ShadesEverything.com for the show notes and some other stuff. Just a reminder, we are now uploading the episodes on YouTube. So if you would rather listen on YouTube, you can absolutely do that. Um, and follow the page on Facebook if you have not, slash Shay Hates Everything, to get updates on like when episodes are live and all that good stuff. And if you have an email, like our good buddy Stephen DC, 
Email us at info at SheaHatesEverything.com. That's could... info at SheaHatesEverything.com. Good job, man. I was going to forget to do that. I know. Good job. What a great co-host. I, I got this in the bag. <laughs> the bag of fun dip <laughs> that I'm about to dig into. The end. We'll see you guys next episode. Peace out.